All right, hello. Today, you're going to be learning how to build. It's going to be very, very simple, and it will take me just 10 minutes. Yeah, so that was a fucking lie. You can buckle up and enjoy the ride into learning how to mod now. We're going to see three guns today. We're going to see the Salta, which is my favorite gun in the game. We're going to see the Tenna Tetra, because it has two firing modes. And we're also going to see the... Where is it? I'm, I passed it, didn't I? Yeah, it did. Well, the Baza. So we're going to see three weapons that are completely different. And it will cover up pretty much everything that you need to do uh, to go about modding and choosing what to go and where to go about it. So, let's completely start off very, very simply with the Salta. So, first time you're picking the Salta, you go to these enemies, you shoot it. Oh, it's a primary weapon with uh, OK Fire It. Feel some slash brokes, pretty decent. Secondary fire. That sounds nasty. Okay, cool. Uh, so you're like, okay, that's interesting. And then you look at the stats. So the stats you have... Uh, wait, let me remove the Kalat mod so we don't get distracted here. Alright. So we have 1.8 crit multiplier, 24% crit chance and two status. And then we have 40% crit chance, 3x crit multiplier, 32% status. So uh, what we understand immediately is that this is a crit weapon. The crit stats are above 20%, so it's crit viable, we can build it for crit. Any weapon that has above 20% crit chance is a crit viable weapon, and you need to build crit on it, because crit is the best way to get the most out of it. Now, this is not including counter weapons, anything like the uh, Felix or the Fenmore. These are weapons that crit is not necessarily mandatory on it, except you want to go that way. There is, of course, a way to go for crit on these weapons, but it's not recommended, especially on the Felarx that has some really unique Sanani guns when it comes to using it with stuff like Zada's Whisper. But we're not gonna talk about it here. We're gonna talk about, like, very basic. You just started the game, you wanna learn how to mod. So, this is a crit weapon, outright. Is status high? Yes, status is high. Does this mean we have to build for status? No. This is the thing that most people get wrong. Because people would put out a build, and then they would add, instead of uh, whatever mods, they would add this, and then... Where's Rhyme Rounds? Uh, here. So they would do something like this, and they'd be like, okay, my viral build is done. Or if they want to go corrosive, they would just go corrosive, right? So you're like, okay, this is decent, but we have to understand, the Stalta secondary fire has one of the highest base damages out of any secondary fire in the entire fucking game. So... We want to build for damage. We want to build for damage. Any kind of damage that we're missing from our elemental modes is being completely wasted. So, how do you even start building your weapon? First of all, you ask yourself, does my weapon benefit from Ultishot? Yes, okay. Galvanized Chamber, and What weapons don't benefit from Ultishot? Something like the... Opticor. The Opticor doesn't benefit from multi-shot. Why? Because it's a laser weapon, a head scan laser weapon. Those work weirdly, but it's very few examples. I will show you where you can find that out so you know. So this multi-shot doesn't benefit on it, uh, on the Opticor. So you wouldn't add this, but here it does on the most weapons. 99% of the weapons do benefit from multi-shot. So Galvanized Chamber, always a mod. Then you always always put this now there is a few exceptions we will get to those but 99 percent of the time your next mode will be this why because this right here can either just give you straight up more damage which is like adding serration to your build so adding serration or this would yield the same thing or it can be multiplicative damage which is even better because adding this and serration will make the damage for serration multiply with this as well on top of whatever elemental damage you will add. So, how do you know then if your gun has multiplicative or additive CO? Well, there is no way to know. Instead, you come visit the website that I have over here and you check it. So, we go ahead, we go find the Salta. These are alphabetical orders, so S. There is my Stalta, 
primary multiplies, secondary multiplies. If this is multiplies, you have multiplicative gun CO. So this direct damage type per status multiplies your overall damage. If this is additive, then we do not use serration. We don't use this alongside galvanized aptitude. What can we do if we don't want to use both? We use only one of them. This is a rare instance and you will mostly see it on something like AOE weapons. We will get to that. So, let's get out of this, have this in the background. So, Stalto has multiplicative CO. So, this is a must and then we can add this. This is good to add on the build because it multiplies your old damage and the, the damage of the Stalto is high already. Alright, what do we get after? Well, after we can go and add more crit because it's a crit weapon. So, let's add the crit modes that are critical delay or point strike and then vital sense. And let's add our elements. So this, and then let's add our element. Boom. So why viral? Uh, because prime cry around is a mode that exists, and we don't have a prime mode for electricity to go corrosive. Even though corrosive radiation here would be lovely, we want to take as much damage as possible. So now we are left with our last slot. So here is the slot that we will think about depending on the gun that we use. So, on the Stalta, if we just take it right now and see how it performs, right? So obviously no stacks, won't do much, but it does pretty decent. I mean, 10 viral procs on him. You know, no... Uh, no arcane either, secondary fire, not a lot of damage, but pretty decent I would say, especially once these galvanized stacks do take effects. Now with two galvanized shot stacks, one of the bullets missed. So yeah, now it does okay. So what do we add? Do we like the reload of the gun? Yes, the reload is 1.4 seconds. Okay, we can go for primary dead hit. Why? Because dead hit, Rax rank, increases our headshot multiplier and reduces our recoil. Uh, where would we add Meshless? If we have an AOE weapon, if we hated the reload speed of our weapon, if it was completely dog shit, or if we went for a synergy setup, which we can talk after. So we are going for dead hit. We are going for dead hit, thanks. So let's see how much Deadhead actually added to this. So decent damage overall because, you know, headshot uh, multipliers and shits. It didn't stack itself, but... So you see, as long as we can stack it, fine. But since we don't stack it, then now takes a lot of bullets, obviously. Now with one dead hit suck. Decent. 123k. Alright. So, as I'm firing this, you will see one thing always. We're dealing impact proc and a stagger on every hit onto the enemy. We can now either do... We can do some things. First of all, do we hate the fire rate of the weapon? Yes. Okay. We add... Pirate. Prime Shred is an option, Speed Trigger is an option, and then Val Acceleration is an option, but I cannot add it. Uh, Vigilante Fervor is an option, and this is good because it will give you a chance for a red crit on the weapon, so overall now, we can go again with Vigilante Fervor. Better to use the primary fire because, you know, Vigilante Fervor. There you go. Looks decent. And I didn't even add more damage. I added fire. So... Yeah. That's nice. What else can you add? Well, we can always add more multi shots. Vigilante armaments, if we don't care about fire, it is always fine. Now, there is more uh, ideas. You can add hunter munitions. Do you want more bleed? Do you want more bleed on the primary and secondary fire? You can add 100 munitions. This will make the secondary fire bleed, and it will also make the explosion of the secondary fire also have a chance to bleed. 
and as you can see it does hurt a lot and then because of that guaranteed impact poke if you want to guarantee your secondary fire to bleed because this is always a 30% chance you can go ahead and add internal bleeding where is it okay so I cannot add it right now so I'm gonna move this and go with this Obviously, this is going to have a bit worse results, but overall it will seem better because of how internal bleeding interacts with this. Generally, Argon does have the low fire rate for internal bleeding to take its full effect, and it will also give you that guaranteed slash work. So, now we can try this. And bada bing bada boom. Slash work. And the slash work ticks, and the guy does. Takes 400k the guy dies. So now we have a gun that whenever we shoot the secondary fire, we get a guaranteed bleed proc of at least 400k. And I'm saying at least because this is without any deadhead stacks. And there is also a chance for the people to die as well. So now we're looking ourselves at a really, really, really strong gun. But you're like, okay, well, the fire rate is still really bad. How do we fix that? Well, now is where your Warframe comes in. Do you run Wisp or something that can give fire rate? Boom, your fire rate is fixed. You don't? You're running something like, I don't know, Rhino? What can you run on Rhino to fix the fire rate? Boom, you take out this because you're not playing support. And then you go Arcane Acceleration. Now we have fire rate. Look at that. Why do I look like this? <laughs> the fuck is this? <laughs> Why am I green? Hello? Why am I green? What? Yo, look at this. My fashion is not green, by the way. I don't know why I'm, I'm green, but... Uh, okay. Wow, now we have fire. And this works on both firing modes. Look at that. So that's our fire, fire rate issue result. So... Get out of here, you big bull of mud. My, my beautiful and you know this is kind of something that i would probably run if i didn't have a ribbon mod. If, if i didn't have a ribbon mod sorry thankfully i do have a ribbon mod and this is now what i'm running now you see i have primary merciless this is because i never really run anything that is too high level if i do run anything that's high level i'm gonna take this instead that is the same build but with deadhead and why do i not use internal bleeding because I lucked out and got myself a Riven that gives me crit chance crit damage, Toxin so I can completely remove any kind of Toxin mod, and then Minus Puncture would allow me to force bleed procs as much as possible on my primary fire and as much as possible on the secondary fire as well. Since the bleed damage that your weapon has doesn't scale with how much actual bleed damage it deals, there is a decent chance that we still get a bleed proc when doing this. Now the chance is not that much because obviously viral and radiation will prevail. But sometimes it happens. It does happen a lot on the primary fire. There it is. Now it happened. It took like five swords, but you know. It is decent. And obviously the primary fire will not shred because yeah. So that is what I ended up with. Now can this build be better? Yes, because we can remove hammer shots and this and add something like internal bleeding. And then I take a vigilante supplies mode here, rank 0, and boom, I have an insane, insane Stalter build. So this Stalter build, in theory, can be better. At this point, this can already do level cap very easily. It can do level cap without even armor stripping, without even priming either, because the Stalter is way, way too strong. So, I don't have an issue running this build if I want to do level cap. But this is how to build one of the weapons, for example. This is the starter. And we took a look at, like, regular primary weapon build, as well as taking the advantage that a weapon specifically has and boosting its damage even more because of that. So in this case, guaranteed impact proc, internal bleeding, Boom, huge bleed proc that deals true damage, and enemies die very quickly. So now we're going to swap to the Tetra. The Tetra is a weapon that has two firing modes, right? So we're going to ring this build. I can just rebuild it, it's fine. And we're going to take a look at it. What does the Tetra have? The Tetra 
Uh, first of all is uh, Tenet weapon. Tenet or Kuva weapons uh, will give you the chance to get a progenitor on them and choose what kind of elements you want to work with. I chose heat. Why did I choose heat? Because I like heat procs in general. One heat proc is enough to ruin 50% of an enemy's armor, so I do tend to like heat procs a lot. Now, is heat proc the best one for this weapon? It's arguable because depending on what kind of build you want to go, you can easily go toxin and get a lot more advantages from going toxin because you don't have to mod for it. But because I want to mod and I want to get hit on my build some way, I don't want to go toxin personally. For you, this may be different. Now, let's see what the Tetra does. The Tetra, we shoot at these guys, has a normal primary fire that deals puncture slash pretty decent and now our secondary fire it throws out our entire mag and makes it explosive and it gives it an interesting reload animation too well that's its normal reload animation okay cool I had no idea anyways uh so what do we do here now so now we have to make a choice how do I use this weapon? Do I use the secondary fire? Do I use the primary fire? Do I go for both? Let's say that we chose to use the primary fire. Okay, so does this weapon benefit from multi-shot? Yes. So, multi-shot, in. Galvanized aptitude, in, always. Now, let's go to the pace bin. So, pace bin. Let's find Tetra. Then a Tetra. Additive. It adds. The, what does this mean? This means... We do not want to add summation. Why? Because it's additive. All right. What do we add then? All right. Let's see. We can add. First of all, is it a crit weapon? Twenty-eight percent crit. I guarantee you, this is a crit weapon. It has twenty-eight percent crit. So, you know, it crits for real. It does crit. So this is now a crit weapon. Amazing. So, did it have any impact procs? No, it didn't. All right. Does it have good status chance? Yes, it has. All right. What do we do since it has a good status chance? Well, we do this. We can either move this here, add one prime mod, and then add our normal toxin mod. Where is it? Malignant force. Or we can completely remove this, and we can add rhyme rounds here, and we can bowl with the rest of the of the build. So. We're gonna showcase both of the results and see how, what would you guys prefer, and we're gonna test it, so you guys can see. Now, here we have two remaining mods to do whatever we want. This is the same thing as we did on the Stalter, but on the Stalter we had Serration. And we had Serration because the multiplicative CO. Now we don't have it, so we don't use it. Simple. So... What do we use now? Well, we have a bunch of options. We can go for more crit with Galvanize. That is fine. We can go for Bleed procs with Hunter Munitions, because this has a crit chance of whatever this is. We can go a Bane mode alongside it, because we can bleed and then the Bane mode can do its work. Uh, but first of all, let's decide to try this weapon out right now and see how it feels. So good damage overall, I would say. The heat box goes ahead and then he gives me a lot of things. We say an orange crit there because of the puncture stacks. So we see a lot of procs on this guy. And that is good. This is good that we see a lot of procs on this guy. The 90% status chance is giving us so much value on our galvanized aptitude whenever we do get those stacks. So now, we can go ahead and add our primary dead hit. Why? Because we're playing a primary weapon that we're focused on the normal fire and we can just aim for headshots. So, 1500, uh, 2950. Pretty decent stats. Now with one galvanized uh, stack. 3k damage, 4k damage, 8k damage dies. Now with two stacks, immediately ramping up, really fast. 
So there is a thing that I think is blatantly obvious that we don't like about this gun, and it is fire rate. So what do we add? We add vital acceleration. Why can we add vital acceleration? Because we don't care about minus damage. Remember, this is additive. So minus damage hurts our damage like by 1% or something. It doesn't do anything. It literally doesn't hurt our damage whatsoever. Now let's see the overall DPS difference. That feels way, way better. That feels so good. Now let's see with one stack. That kills quite quickly. So, um, seeing these procs, now we can judge. First of all, do I need hunter munitions on my build? Probably not. Let's add um, our vigilante supplies mode. I'm not going to use kinetic ricochet just for the sake of the video. So now we have the last mode. The Avane scope, is it good? Yes. Do we use it as much? I'm not sure. Uh, Bane of Grenier, do we fight the Grenier? Yes, this is pretty decent, I would say. Uh, since, you know, since this is not multiplicative, but this is, then you get a 1.5... You get a multiplier just on Grenier, I mean, so... We go for Heavy Gunner, but Grenier once now. Yeah, thanks. And we shoot it. First guy is gonna take approximately the same to die, but second guy... And then the rest, they die very quickly. Like super quickly. So now this is what happens if we go for its primary fire. We did something like that. Now what if we go for the secondary fire? Actually, no. First of all, we're gonna show the difference with this and see what we prefer. I'm not gonna shoot this guy because he's armor stripped. First kill was a bit slower, second kill was fine, third kill is faster, and from here on out it's just really really fast. I don't think we can even tell the difference anymore. I think if these enemies were higher level then maybe this would be better. Overall, I believe that Prime Cry Rounds is on par. Same, maybe faster, but overall I don't really notice the difference. So, now let's say that we want to focus on the secondary fire of the weapon. So, secondary fire, let's remember it's an AoE with a lot of range, so do we need aptitude? No. No. Aptitude in this gun is additive. Additive. If we use aptitude and we don't use serration, we get a problem. How do you get kills with the gun to make use of galvanized aptitude and actually benefit from it? How would you be able to do that? You will need to get a kill with the gun first on its lowest freak damage, it has no damage whatsoever, and then be able to translate that damage into more status procs, and you want a weapon that will kill many enemies in one shot. Why would I need to prime those enemies first to do that? The Tetra will only shoot once. So, no Galvanized Shot this time. Or Galvanized Aptitude, sorry. So galvanized Shot is the second one. So, now we can remove Acceleration as well and this, because the secondary fire doesn't care about dealing status strokes. The only thing it cares about is dealing a lot of damage. So, what, what can we add instead here? We can add Infected Clip. So, now we are filling the Salta tactic, but without Galvanized Aptitude. Same thing. No multiplicative CO can't use Galvanized Aptitude, it will just lower my damage compared to other mods, and then I will also waste the mod space. As you see, before I could recommend you a lot of mods for the Salta, I can't put all the mods together because I have a limited mod space, so we have to make a choice. And this is where the differences in some builds between YouTubers come in, come in and this is where your playstyle also comes in, right? So now... Let's be honest, we don't need fire it. Switch one bullet at a time, that's about it. Uh, what else could we need? Well, I would argue that Hunter Munitions is really good here. Why? Because we have an explosive weapon with high crit. If that explosive weapon with high crit can also slash proc, 
That would be pretty damn crazy. You know? That, that would be pretty bonkers. So I'm gonna use that. So now that we have these so far, let's test it and see how it deals. So we're gonna shoot at these enemies. Slash poke on this guy. Not a lot of damage, but... You know. Pretty okay. If you get a slash book, it's okay. And we have run out of ammo. So... As we see, there is a lot of fall of damage. What can we do to counter that? We can add more blast radius. Takes it up to 11 point whatever meters. Gives it some nice stats. And also we had dead hit. We don't want dead hit because we're not gonna aim at the enemy's head. So merciless is king here. All right. Now that we have some decent mods, let's try it again. So we hit everyone. Some of them get hit box. That guy is ammo ship, man, a block. So he dies. We see a lot of slash box, a lot of heavy numbers. Really decent overall, now we have it stacked, so we can also try it with stacks. See how it performs. Pretty good, 47k. Really high blast radius, in the lighting. And I think this is where we kinda end the build, because, I mean, what are, what are we missing here? We have the blast radius, we have a lot of damage, especially if we armor, armor strip somehow, sorry. And then, that's about it. What else can we do? Well, on the previous build for the primary fire, we could also go corrosive. Since, you know, as we found out, we didn't really need any kind of... Uh... Where is it? We didn't really need any kind of primed cry around, so we have the chance to go corrosive here. So, boom, boom, corrosive. What else do we have? We have a mod that gives us radiation damage now, so we could easily add that into the mix as well. So now, let's go Corrosive Radiation, add our Fire Rate mod back, and see what this does. This is a completely different looking setup, and in theory, it has the same idea as the other setup. So, primary dead head on as before, let's see what it does. So it armor almost pretty quickly. So heavy gunner units weak to corrosive, but every Grenier unit is either weak to corrosive and radiation, so this versus Grenier very, very, very strong. So, you know, you're like, okay, so when should I choose Viral, and when should I choose Radiation Corrosive combo? When should I do that? Well, there is two things that you have to take into account. One is, obviously, does my gun have high status chance? Yes, then you can go Corrosive Radiation, because you have enough status chance to pro Corrosive and Radiation and benefit from them. And the second thing you have to ask yourself is, Am I going for slash procs? Because slash procs scale with viral, since viral gives you bonus damage to health. So, these are the two questions are you asking? If you're asking yes to the first and no to the second, then you can, in fact, go for this type of build. And this type of build will work. There is green Archon shards in the game right now as well, so you can fully armor strip someone. It is amazing. Also, <clears throat> one last thing is, does my gun have innate viral damage? If you answer this to this, to this question as well, then yeah, you can go this combo. So now you guys know how to build the Hemite. Just go Corrosive Radiation Viral, and then you can add heat to the mix as well if you want to get extra spicy. The Hema is a beast if you try it, by the way. Trust me on this. So, last gun we're gonna take... Oh yeah, my bad, I didn't show what my actual uh, Tetra build is after all that. So the Tetra builds that I'm using is either this, which is the primary fire build, 
I went for a galvanized scope uh, setup with Viral, and then I added a lot of uh, damage through my Riven mod. This could have been easily something like Hunter Munitions, but then while testing this I realized that the gun simply deals too much damage. So, before because I used it with Wisp as well, you see first target, and it just dies very quickly. And now this is where the fun begins. Three bullets. Three bullets are enough for almost every enemy. So why would I go hunter munitions when I have too much damage, you know? That's kind of my thought process. But this is playstyle based, as I said. If you want to go higher level, then yes, of course, do go Hunter Munitions, it's better for you. I just don't play level cap. The other build I have is the Secondary Fire build. As you see, the Secondary Fire build, no sight of any uh, galvanized aptitude. No galvanized aptitude. We have Merciless, we have the Raven mode instead of uh, Prime Firestorm which was the only mod I didn't put except at the very end, if you noticed. So, this is literally the exact same idea of the build that I had, except instead of Prime Firestorm at the end, I added my Raven mod that gives more damage. And if we want to see how this performs... That was with no attacks whatsoever, so... So yeah, really good, really good. The Tetra, uh, I put it so high in the list because it's really a beast. Uh, Riven Disposition, crazy on it. And the best part about it, if you want to go a secondary fire build on the, on the Tetra, look at this. Launches explosive, consuming entire magazine. What does this mean? This means that if we get a Riven mod with negative magazine capacity, we can hurt ourselves a lot less from throwing our 80 mag onto the enemy all the time, which would uh, really ruin our ammo economy, and we would need to take care of our ammunition and kill groups of enemies instead of wasting the secondary fire on a single enemy, just because, you know, we, we cannot do it in the current situation. But with a minus mag capacity even, then this would become crazy. So that's one thing to keep an eye on, because this is what I was saying. This is the unique special ability of the weapon. How can we boost that? With the Riven mode, like minus mag capacity Riven mode, you can boost it like that if you want. So that is another way to think about building the Tetra. So there is some rules to building, as you can see, but you can put yourself out there. What you can really do. This is what I did with the Lanka and I'm going to show it to you after. And where I use the Lanka. Because I don't use it on any other scenario than this one scenario that I made for myself. Which is all about synergy. Now, the last gun I wanted to show you how to how I build is in the buzz. So, we're going to take read of everything here. So now... Let's take a look at this. So, we add Galvanized Chamber. This is a fully auto normal weapon, no questions here. Multi shot benefits this, we add it. No questions about it. Aptitude. Go to the list. Find Baza. Pasmo, Paracor, Paracor, Altar, Bonico. Artemis bow, Archoplasmor, crossbows. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder. Where did we find in Baza exactly? Passes forth. This is not it. Showing me this. 
but this is not it, so. Try one more time. Oh, shows me this. Oh, Kuva Komor Baza Prime at long range will have no follow up on gun CO's damage portion of instance. This is also true for additive projectile weapons such as Zarza Paraz. So it's saying the Baza will have no fall off damage on the gun CO. So this fall off thing right here doesn't affect this mod. This is good to know. This is good to know. This is something that I didn't even know about myself. I just learned this because I searched for this video. Goddamn. I didn't even know about this. Does that matter? Not that much. What matters here is that the Baza is nowhere to be found. So what do we do? Well, simple. We test. And how do we test? Well, we'll make our build, first of all. 28% crit chance. So, crit weapon. Critical delay, vital sense, in. Uh, do we... What do we do about it? Do we go corrosive? Sure, let's go corrosive. Screw it. Boom. Boom. Cross it. Alright. Uh, now. What do we... Let's add hammer shot to, to make the testing easy. So. Take these enemies in. So one thing we immediately noticed is that the fire rate of this weapon is not really that bad. It feels pretty good on its own. But it has very, very low damage. So 511992. 2500 is the highest that I saw. Alright. Let's take it. So now. Uh, we did 552 and then we added 2000 damage. If we add serration to this build, as it is, and we see plus 2000 damage compared to the first target, then the damage is added. So here we see 26, 28 at maximum. So now with this guy, we see 38, 18. So say it with me, it is additive. It is additive. This is why you saw the damage not go up almost at all. Serration, boom, removed. The Baza is additive. Alright, now we can get back to building the build normally. So, do we add prime cry rounds? Do we go for corrosive still? Did corrosive feel good? It felt okay, but I feel like it's a bit non viable. But let's try it anyway. Uh, what can we add now? Well, it has fire rate, so fire rate is not a problem. We don't need to add it. We can add Bane of Grenier. Bane of Grenier is fine. And what else? What else can we add? What should our last mod build? Well, let's see what it does with Bane of Grenier first. Obviously, first kill without observation, not gonna be good, but now. Really strong. Even stronger. So, we do get a lot of. Uh, a lot of probes. Alright, let's try viral instead. Let's see what viral does. Now with Viral, we can add this now, and then this. It's the same thing, before I had Infected Clip and Jolt, now I have Prime Car Rounds and Malignant Force. I'm just using the Prime mode since I do have it available. This is not an unfair advantage, this is how the modding part of the game works. It takes me way longer to kill this guy, but my Slash probes are dealing way more. Once again, I see Slash Probes doing way more, but my damage is not that great. So, what do I conclude for this is, since this is a low damage weapon with very, very high crits, it is way, way more beneficial to go full blast it with any kind of uh, 
elemental modes that I want because elemental modes are the ones scaling the damage of your bleed. Oh, sorry. Elemental modes are the ones scaling the damage of your bleed and not actual bleed procs. So you see my bleed, my slash is 3.5, it's nothing. And not your actual uh, slash damage. It's this that scales it. Not this, not this, not this, but this. So we want as much elemental as possible if we're going for this type of build. So now let's try it one last time. First target. Now with Hunter Munitions that is a little quicker. Second target. Completely shredded. Now it gets crazy. Yeah, now it gets crazy. That is beautiful. I like it. So this is a weapon that we cannot go corrosive radiation. Why couldn't we? Because the status chance of the weapon was still low. When the status chance of the weapon is a whopping 14%, then going for corrosive and radiation, no matter how much status chance we add, we cannot go enough high of a status chance to benefit from these. We would need to add a lot of fire rate to our gun, we would need to add a lot of status to our gun. So, uh, our build, if I can just build it again, looked something like boom, boom, and boom. this. This was the build that we ended up with, and we can use Vigilante Supplies to boost the crits, and the end result now with some wisp buff, let's say, if you want to add fire rate to the mix for fundies, would be this. The slash brooks do go crazy. They might not tick for a lot, but there are too many. Because of the weapon's high crit chance and decent fire rate, we get way, way, way too many slash procs, and one viral proc is enough for us to get huge benefit on our damage. So, at the end of the day, the Baza build that I went for was this one. As you see, same idea with the other builds. The only thing that I changed is Primed Grenier mode is swapped for my Riven mode that gives me crit chance, crit damage, punch through, and minus zoom. Now, is this overall better? Yes. Is this better for versus Grenier? Maybe not. It is arguable that it's not. Let's see. We do get a hefty amount of crit, so... These last folks are gonna hit way, way more. With this much crits. My Riven does have minus zoom as well, so it kind of feels weird to be honest, but... But honestly, it's an SMG. I don't really mind it on an SMG. So, this is what I ended up with. Now, obviously, as you saw, versus Grenier enemies, since we have the primed Bane of Grenier on the other mode, it wasn't that great. But if we went ahead and chose these guys instead in the other, mo the other builds, we would now need to change the other build to primed... Uh, Bane of Corrupted, if we wanted it to have the same effect as on this bit. So, that is kind of the whole idea on how you need to build weapons. Now, you may say, okay, you may have another weapon like the Proposki Cernos that has pure status, well, you have the same idea, you completely ditch any kind of crit mods and you can go for more, ma for more damage, even if your aptitude is additive. Like, here, it doesn't really matter what kind of mods you get, since you cannot add any kind of crit mods, additive CO is still fine. Or you can make it a primer, getting a primer on it is fine as well. Or you can make it deal that kind of corrosive radiation setup, add hit procs to it, make it hit inherit, you have a lot of stuff to do about it. Which is something that I did with the Baza. The Baza went with a triple dot build that focuses on three status procs uh, doing dot damage at the same time 
this was kind of my playstyle. You know what you can do on the on the Basmo since it has electricity and heat? You can get a corrosive radiation build and you, then you have two procs by itself. Corrosive and radiation and galvanized attitude that on this gun is multiplicative. So this with a Bane of Grenier setup that I'm running here would deal with any Grenier unit forever. Literally forever. And yeah, that's kind of how you can build on every gun. So experiment, follow the steps into how to build the gun and I'm sure you will find a lot of success. And if anyone in the comments goes ahead and says, okay, but what about the Corpus? Don't be silly. The Corpus die from any kind of weapon that has toxin. You want to deal with a Corpus, buddy? Go build your weapon with one toxin mode and then build it for crit. And then you deal with the Corpus. Congratulations. Thank you for watching. Discord Twitch links in the description. I'll see you on the next episode.